Hey everyone, welcome back to Carrots and Olives. My name is Brittany and today we are going to talk about my currently inked fountain pens for the month of August. You can see I have my little pyramid divided by six different sections and I've already pre-planned out the inks that I'm going to use and they're already on paper to make it a little bit easier and faster of a video. So my pens that I have this month are actually seven and I decided that I wanted to start introducing two pens with one ink and different nibs just to see how that ink varies from one nib size to the to the next. So I have my Galen leather case here. I had a boo-boo with this particular uh, swatching here and now I have a stain. So it's telling its story. This is the honey ochre color and you can see I've had it for I think two years now. So it has definitely gotten a really pretty patina. This was the original color or close to it. And you see here that this is a six pin case and I actually have seven pens in here. And the way I do that is I pick a small, less girthy pen to fit on top. It doesn't squish the pen and it just sits, it, it kind of just rests on top here, allowing the cover still to close and it works. So that's how you can get seven pens in a six pen Galen leather case. I've been doing this for over a year since I, well, probably a year and a half since I discovered that I could fit a pen on top and um, it hasn't damaged the case or anything. I don't always put a pen on top, but if I need to, you know, it works. So that is something you could do if you have this case as well. I have some pens here that I haven't really shown in a, quite some time. So let's get started. Okay, so the first pen we're going to talk about is this hunky monkey piece of clear acrylic. <laughs> um, this is an Opus 88 and this is the clear demonstrator. I decided to go with the lightest ink in my demonstrator because I knew I had a broad nib and hoping that it will really show off the ink. I'm going to open up the section here to allow some ink to flow through. Although I, you know, I looked at this ink first in this pen and kind of tested it out just a little just to see how well or how unwell the ink will perform. And I feel as though it's still a little light, but maybe after the ink sits in the pen, it will show off a little bit better. So this is the Opus 88 Clear Demonstrator. And the ink I have in here is the new, to me, Dominant Industry. This is the Painter Series and it's Le Nymphius Le Nuage. And it's really pretty. It has like blue um, and teal and purple in it. You can kind of see the purple right here. I'm finding that in my broad, let's say broad, you are getting some pretty good shading. So I'm not hating that. We'll see how it goes throughout the month. I'm pretty sure it seems like it starts off dark after it hasn't been written with for a while and then it gets lighter. 
So we'll see how it goes when I'm writing for a longer period of time. Okay, so the next pen is this one. And this one is an oldie, but still a goodie. It is the Birmingham Pen Company uh, Model A. And this, is, this one is in Apocalypto. It has a Knox fine nib on it. And it does post, but it becomes really long. And it doesn't really post uh, deeply. So I decided it would match really well with this turquoise color. And I really like how well uh, this nib writes. It's been a while. Birmingham. Pen Company. And this pen I actually purchased back in 2019. I was trying to search the name um, through my email from, you know, the orders, and I finally came upon it. Apocalypto. And this one is in a fine. You get some really good shading with this ink. The ink is called It's the Van Diemen's Bird, Birds of a Feather Fountain Pen Ink. So I talked about this ink uh, in my last video. And I find it really pretty, has some really pretty shading. The name is very interesting, um, but it's just, it's gorgeous. And I think you could really see how gorgeous it is, even in a small nib pen. Okay, so the third ink in this row was actually given to me in an ink swap recently with that orange color, Robert Oster Whiskey, that I... I announced that I did not like. So I switched it with a friend and she um, let me choose from her collection of inks that she wasn't going to, she was willing to give away. And I chose this one. So it's Jacques Herbin Blue Ocean. And I have it in this fountain pen. So this is my Franklin Christophe fountain pen. And oh, I got some weirdness. <laughs> on here some dried up I don't know what that is so this is the model 25 and it's the Eclipse so this came out or it has come out in multiple colors I initially got this black one because I think it was Chris Kristen on Instagram Nook or Manook um, she showed this pen and how it posts like this within the clip, which is so cool. And I figured I needed to get one of these because if I don't, I'm gonna regret it. At the time, back then, I think this is back in 2019, this pen um, only wasn't readily available as I think it seems like it is now. And so when it became available, I pounced. And uh, and it was one of my favorite pens uh, back in the day of my collection. I like how it's a hooded nib. So it kind of goes over. Some people don't like that because the ink um, kind of gets, you know, it's, it can be hard to clean. Um, and sometimes you may not see the ink settle in there, but I find that I don't mind. So one day when I moved, uh, a few years back, I had put this pen 
in uh, one of my planners. And I could not find this pen for the life of me at that time when I was looking for it. And I was so, I, I even have it recorded on a YouTube video. I was so frustrated and upset that I lost a like $150 fountain pen. It, I looked for it for a long time and I couldn't find it. So I bought another one and I bought it in the white color, which is called Ghost. It wasn't too long after I bought that one that I found this one hidden in one of my planners. <laughs> and it was like a planner cover, uh, not like an actual like notebook, it was the cover. So anyway, I now have two of these, which is fine. I have them in different colors and I do love them both. Uh, so the ink I'm using here is the Blue Ocean. Blue Ocean. So this is the ink that I decided to put into two pens. And the other pen is the Leonardo. And um, we talked about this. This is the same pen I used for that orange ink, which I didn't like. But then I thought, well... Um, well, I thought, and others thought too, thank you for agreeing with me and suggesting that I should try this pen in a different color, a color that I know I would like. So I did, and it's beautiful. It works really well in this pen, and it makes me rethink the nib. It was really the nib and the color I didn't care for. Um, I'm not a huge fan of like the stub 1.1 large nibs. And so um, that was something else that was bothering me. But now that I've, or that I am trying it with a different color that is up my alley, I am really enjoying it so far. Okay, one thing I noticed about this black mat is the, it's, I don't know if it's because of my, the oils in my hand, but there's these markings or the change in the material here, how it's looking lighter and ashy in some parts of the pen. So... <laughs> I don't know if that's just me from using it and like gripping it, but it's in the weirdest spots. It's like two different, it's hard to see it on the camera, but it's two different spots, like rings of ashy black mat and everything else is slightly different. So I don't know what happened there. I'm still trying to figure out if it's me or if it's the pen, but moving on. We have this next beautiful color, and this one is in another Franklin Christoph. It almost blends in with the colors here. So this is a Franklin Christoph Model 45 Long. They have a model 45 short, or just 45. This is called the charcoal and cream. Or creme. The ink here is actually Dominant Industry. Horseshoe Bend. And it has some really pretty shading you can see. Um, and this is in a SIG. Broad. And a number five size. So the number fives nibs for the Franklin Kristoff were feel felt dry to me 
So I decided to switch it out with a SIG Broad, which you can buy their nibs from their website. And they fit in a lot of regular housings or Yovo housings. So it, you know, the nibs will work on other pens, not just Franklin Kristoff. And you can get their SIG, SIG pens in a fine medium broad for under $50. So I decided to switch out the nib and it writes really good. I love the SIG nibs. They are close to a stub, but they write better to me for the way I use my pen and how I write. Okay, so the next pen is another Franklin Kristoff. And this is in the solid ice. This is actually slightly larger than the last one and it holds a number six nib. So, this one, Franklin, Stuff model. So they name all their pens with the word model in a number 46. And they have Roman numerals after it. Solid ice. And this is in a SIG medium. It writes really nice. Um, the nice thing about Franklin Kristoff pens is that for a majority of them, they are, um, you're able to eyedropper them. And it's really fun to eyedropper a pen with this clear um, ice look in the barrel. So uh, yeah, I, I've done it once and the ink has cleaned out pretty well. Um, you just have to make sure you kind of scrub in there and it's pretty easy to clean their pens. Uh, the ink I'm using is Van Diemen. This is the K Coty. And it has this gold shimmer and um, blue and red sheen. It's really nice. And I could, it comes out in this number six nib really well. All right. And then last but not least is my Mont Blanc 145 Meisterstück. And this one has the platinum trim with the medium nib. It does post. It's very skinny pen, so not like the 146 where it's really big and the, the 147. So Mont Blanc. It's very smooth. Why, did I, why am I doing that? <laughs> 145. I find that there's a little bit of hard start there. Meisterstruck. And I have a medium. It kind of looks like a broad, but it writes really well. It's very smooth. Um, so far, it seems like it's working well with this ink. It's a very deep ink with some nice shading. The ink itself is a Taranishi guitar. Looks like this, Salon de Violet. Violet. 
I'm excited to see how all of these are going to write this month. And again, I do have, I am favoring my blues and my purples because those are my favorite. Um, if you guys have any questions, please post them in the comments below. And I'm curious, are any of you going to ink up for August? And how many do you ink up? Or how many have you inked up for this month? Please let me know in the comments below. And I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.